All right, we're going to look at radical functions, their graphs, and some properties of the radical function graphs, including their translations. So, a radical functions are functions where the independent variable is in the radicand. So, that means that you have to have a function, which means you have to have y and x. So, so y equals, and your x must be inside the radicand. So here we have y equals the square root of x, which, which is what we call the parent function for radical functions. So this is going to be your typical graph, your parent graph, and then any other thing that we look at would be a translation of this graph. So let's look at what the parent graph of y equals the square root of x is. So if I plug in some values, because it's a square root, I'm going to try to pick some perfect squares just so that way I can get some, um, some nice numbers to plot. So if I plug in 0, I get 0. If I plug in 1, I get 1. If I plug in 4, I'll get 2. And 9 will be 3. Um, so if I plot those points, Oh, hold on. If I plug in a negative number, I'm going to get undefined, which because, and that's because I cannot take the square root of a negative number. So since I can't take the square root of a negative number, it's undefined. So here are the points that I could plot. Um, and so notice that, of course, it will continue going this way, which is why they drew an arrow here. Um, so this is what the parent graph or the, or the parent function for a radical function looks like. And then so again, notice that um, there's a, limita a limitation on my domain. Um, so because the domain is limited, the radicand cannot be negative. So in order to figure out what our domain is, we have to... Um, Set the value of the radicand greater or equal to zero. And then uh, from there, we can solve for x to see what our domain would be. Um, so, for example, y equals the square root of x minus 3. To figure out what our domain, we're going to take our radicand, which is x minus 3, because that's what's inside the radical. We're going to set it equal to greater or equal to zero. And then we'll solve for x, so add 3 to both sides. So that means our domain has to be greater than 3, which means that when we draw our graph, we're going to take our parent function, and then um, we just need to make sure that it's greater than 3. So we'll have to shift everything 3 to the right. We can also take a look at some table values if we would like. Here's some table values that um, give us nice numbers. If you want, you can look at the table on your graphing calculator and get some nice points for you to graph. You can also just sketch the parent function knowing that your domain is greater than 3, which means that you have to shift your graph 3 to the right. Um, so remember, we whenever we shift a parent function, our, we graph the parent function example 1, and we shifted it. So remember, we call that a translation. And so it's always going to be the case if you have x in a radical function, if you have x minus a number inside the radicand, it's going to move to the right. If you have x plus a number inside the radicand, it will move to the left. All right, let's take a look at this graph. We have the square root of x plus 4 minus 1. So to get our domain, we'll set our radicand greater or equal to 0. So x plus 4 greater or equal to 0. So solving for x, um, our, it looks like our domain has to be greater or equal to negative 4, which means that we'll shift our graph over um, to negative 4, um, which makes sense, that means because we shifted our parent function 4 to the left based on this translation of x plus 4. Remember, if it's x plus a number, it moves to the left. Okay, and so if we get some nice table values, 
Okay, we can graph those and we can sketch our parent function. Um, and you'll also notice that this graph is, is going to be shifted one down because we do have a K value here. So remember the K value is what moves it up and down. So this K value moved it down one. Okay, so now we're going to graph y equals the square root of negative x. So our domain, because it has to be greater or equal to 0, we'll solve for x by multiplying both sides by negative 1. Um, although that just means we still have 0, but because we multiplied by a negative, it flips our sign to x is less than or equal to 0, which means that our graph is going to flip over the y-axis. And if you notice, if when I plug numbers in, I can't plug in any positive numbers in. I can only plug in negative numbers for x. And But when I plug in negative numbers for x, I end up with positive y values. So again, notice that the graph is a reflection of the graph across the y-axis. So it looks exactly like example 1. It's just flipped over the y-axis. All right, now we're going to graph y equals negative square root of x. So my domain is just x is greater than 0 because the only thing in my radicand is x. So it's going to look exactly like our parent function, except for, remember, we have to multiply by negative. So whatever we plug in for x, we then have to multiply that result by negative. So the square root of 1 is 1, but then I multiply it by the negative, and I get negative 1, so on and so on. So when I graph it, it looks almost ex exactly like the graph from example 1, the parent function, except for all my y's are negative, which means that it's going to, it's a reflection of the graph across the x-axis. All right, so now you know about the translations, um, what a negative inside the radicand does, what a negative outside the radicand does, you know what a h value does inside the radicand, you know what a k value does outside the radicand, um, so you should be able to translate and graph radical functions.